office. Now, this individual here has been charged with numerous felonies for arson, riots, and other crimes. Um, this is a press release from Travis County, Texas, uh, GA's office. And that, I'll read from this. The three people arrested are known members of a local anti-government group, which is a self-identified communist socialist anti-so group. The damage to property and merchandise stolen is valued at over $20,000. So it's not a conspiracy theory. That's a information warfare term. This is, we need to come together as Americans to counter violent extremists on the far right and the far left. I couldn't agree more. Uh, do you agree with the president's designation of Antifa as a terrorist organization? Yes, based on the activities I see what they're doing on the ground. Let me tell you how sophisticated their organizing is. So in Portland, we've had two arrests, this individuals. The woman on the left, Asara Butler, you know what she's accused of? She, police said that she, she's been charged with multiple felonies. They say that uh, on the 2nd of June, she was part of a unit who was driving around during a violent riot in downtown and resupplying her comrades with weapons and more supplies. When police attempted to question and then detain her, she sped off, hit other cars, and the only way they could stop her was by using a, uh, a strip of spikes. And she injured an officer uh, in the process of being arrested. The man on the right, Dakota Lee Lathrop, he was driving a car with a, allegedly driving a car with a fake license plate from North Carolina. When police pulled him over because of suspicious behavior, they found his weapon filled with a cache of weapons. Uh, Mr. No, why didn't the police intervene uh, last year when we've all seen the video, or at least, at least I've seen the video of you being attacked uh, when you were exercising your First Amendment liberties as, as part of freedom of the press? Um, why didn't the police intervene when the police were right there seeing what was going on and seeing you being attacked? Portland is a few years ahead of what the rest of America is experiencing ever since Donald Trump's surprise election win at the end of November, in November in 2016, there's been consistent, routine, violent rioting in Portland involving Antifa and people on the right, street brawls, very brutal uh, clashes, and police have been demonized over and over for responding. Have they been in trying to stop these riots? Have they been it's, instructed by the mayor uh, and, and, the, and the city council not to intervene in these situations? Well, I don't have the evidence of that, but our mayor is also a police commissioner and he's made his dislike of the police pretty clear at times. So through my own reporting, I've just found out that this, this culture of police hatred has created an environment where police are passive and they're tolerating mob violence. And, you know, we're seeing some data coming out now in the weeks since some of the rioting broke out at the end of last month, showing the increase of violence all across America as police are retreating. Yep. So I fear yeah, that America is experiencing what Portland is. I'm about out of time. So uh, Mr. No, let me ask you one more question. Uh, it, it's about this double standard. Um, as you know, the, the city council in Minneapolis voted unanimously to disband the police department in Minneapolis. But we find out today, according to news reports, that members of the city council who voted to eliminate the local police are being protected by private security details. And not just being protected by private security deals, they're using taxpayer dollars to pay for that protection. Uh, give me your thoughts on this, this obvious double standard. Public elected officials need to be protected from terrorists and those who seek to harm them. And you know who else deserves to also be protected by law enforcement? Regular civilians, regular well, citizens, people well, like my co-panelists and people like myself.